When it comes to decorating your front yard, things like gnomes or bird bath might come to mind. But in Portland Cedar Mill neighborhood, one man is taking yard art to record setting heights. Yep, Tony has his story in today's show and tell. So my guest today is Gabe Codet. Uh, Gabe has a rather unusual item in his front yard for show and tell. Gabe, how do you describe what we're looking at here? Well, we call it a lot of things. My dad called it Big Green. Big Green. And your dad created this ceramic structure. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, in the early 90s. Early 90s. So was he uh, an artist by profession? Yeah, so he did large scale ceramics. Uh, he was known for doing anything, any size, any shape, any color for a lot of architects. and Here locally? And, yes, right next door, yeah. What was the commission for Big Green? So it was a Japanese subdivision, a uh, home uh, subdivision up on Bull Mountain that this uh, Japanese company uh, commissioned him to make multiple structures, and he started this one. Um, they bought him a forklift to start making it because it was so huge, and then the the story is the guy embezzled multi, multiple millions of dollars from Japan and went to jail, and the whole project got scrapped. Wow. Yeah. So your dad was stuck with big green and no green. No green. <laughs> What was your dad's name? Joel Cottett. Do you get inquiries of people just driving by? It's pretty visible from the street. Yeah, for sure. What's the reaction yeah. from the neighborhood? It's uh, it's always pretty wild and crazy. You get people coming in and driving in and looking at it, but most of the time it's like, oh, where do you live? I said, you know that really crazy sculpture on Cornell? <laughs> That's my house. The base was thrown in one piece, and it was 3,500 pounds. It was the largest piece of ceramic ever made on, on a potter's wheel and it was hand thrown, and then he had to cut it like a pie because even his new forklift wouldn't pick it up. So you grew up seeing your dad work with this kind of material and this scale of, of art. Yeah. What was that like for you as a kid? Uh, my dad was, uh, he, you know, he had built his own house by the age of 13. He, he dug clay out of the hills and fired in raccoon kilns that he, that he uh, dug up himself. He was, he was an eccentric artist, to say the least. Wow. He was uh, wild and crazy in all the best ways. I'm hoping eventually it goes on public display or somewhere or something, because um, it'll last forever. I mean, it'll be around. It's still, as far as I know, it's the largest piece of ceramic in the world. Uh, it's 10,000 pounds, 22 feet tall. You really have, uh, you know, made a landmark for this part of Cedar Mill, so we appreciate you keeping the, the public art going, and it's a lovely display, and great to find out more about the history of it. So, yeah, thanks, Gabe. Appreciate it. There are actually a couple of others, uh, two in Lake Oswego, and one out at Cornelius Pass Roadhouse. Wow. They have a big red one out there. Uh, but for a while, he was actually working with George Lucas uh, wow. to build one of these uh, that's in Lake Oswego now. Uh, but the story goes that he was going to put it on his two-mile-long driveway at the Skywalker Ranch, and then uh, Star Wars came out, and he was never able to get on hold of George Lucas again. <laughs> so uh, it uh, remains here in the Portland area. Wow. But, yeah, well, cool. good for us. Yeah, yeah right, let right. me get it, win, right? Win. Yeah. Wow. It's it, just so great to know where, where this where yeah. the story behind yeah. this. If you and weather related, if wind ever knocks it over, <laughs> we're in trouble. No uh, kidding, right? Yeah. You have to be I, quite heavy. Like, we're, we're all looking at it. <laughs> quite a windstorm, right? 10,000 yeah. pounds, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. Uh,